What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna have some fun. It's fall, it's getting to the end of the year, and it's time once again to talk shit about our least favorite guns. Today we're gonna go over the top five most disappointing guns of 2023. Malfunction. Now, if you haven't seen this list before, we've done it a couple times, we try to do it every year, and it basically involves the worst guns of the year, or at least the worst guns that I have had experience with this year. I can't buy every gun, but I can get a lot of them, and I got most of the hyped guns of 2023. Some paid off and some didn't. So if you're interested in ones that maybe you should avoid buying, this is a pretty good video for you. Now the parameters of the video are gonna include it being released in 2023 and it being reviewed by me, basically. <laughs> and other than that, anything goes. So today we're gonna go over a couple that just really disappointed me. And disappoint is a little bit different than being really bad. Like things that I understand are bad from the get-go uh, don't disappoint me quite as much. And the sponsor of this video is me. I started a new social media. I'm finally over on Twitter. I know I'm about 10 years too late, but I was tired of the censorship on Instagram. So I think I'm gonna put the majority of my social media now on Twitter. I do have a check mark. Couldn't even get a check mark on Instagram, but that's honest outlaw underscore. So if you go over there and follow me, I would really appreciate it. Let's get right into it with number five. And we're gonna talk about the Glock 47. I've gotten a lot of heat recently because I have been talking honestly about the Glock pistol. And I hear a lot of people say that I'm a Glock hater. I am not a Glock Hater. For all of you that know, I have many, many positive Glock reviews, including the 34, the 19, the 43X. I carry the 43X a lot, and I did for many years, and before that I carried a Glock 26, and I've carried a Glock 19 off and on. I'm familiar with the gun. I have shot them in competition. I have tens of thousand rounds through Glock, so trust me, I'm not a hater. All I'm trying to do is explain to you the shortcomings of it compared to modern pistols today, and that, I think, is exemplified by the Glock 47, its newest release. Jesus, it's so hard to be accurate with this. I gotta say it, but I'm kind of feel its age now. The Glock 47 was Glock's big release for 2023. The gun itself is, I guess as I expected, but I wished it was more. I mean, I haven't shot a stock Glock in a while. All of my Glocks that I love so much, they all have upgraded HD sights. They have lighter trigger. The, the uh, grip has been beveled, so I don't have this crazy forward angle and uh, Jeez, I can't hit water if I fell out of a boat. Here we go. Wow. So it is modeled after the 17 slash 19. Uh, it has been around for a couple of years, but it was released in the United States this year. I think it was designed for Border Patrol, and the idea behind it was they wanted a Glock 17 that could also take 19 slides, which in my personal opinion, is something that you should have done from the get-go. Getting a little better, but yeah, I still don't love it. So basically what you get is you get the same old Glock 17, which isn't bad, don't get me wrong. MSRP of about 600 bucks, weight of about 24 ounces, a four and a half inch barrel, and a capacity of 17 rounds. However, you get less back straps than you get with the standard gun. You know, I only got two instead of four. You get a plastic plate on the optics mounting system that just looks stupid if you're not gonna put an optic on it. You also get the plates included, but Glock plates are notorious for not being the most reliable optics mounting system, so I probably wouldn't even use those. I would probably go with an aftermarket company, and I feel like you get less for your money than you did with the 17, and what you get for it is the interchangeability with the 19, and in all fairness, I don't really see a point in that because they already sell the Glock 45. So if you want a short barreled, long gripped Glock, you can get the 19X or you can get the 45. If you want the four and a half inch barrel, you can get the 17. And if you want the four inch gun with the 15 round mag, you can just get the 19. They are already available. And I know that you can mix and match now, which is great, but that's implying that like anyone that owns a gun hasn't bought a Glock already. They're like the most popular, most venerable gun forever. And almost everybody I know already has a 19 or a 17. So what's the point? <laughs> guess is what I'm trying to say. It's my big question. It's not a terrible gun. It's just what's the point of releasing 
nothing, essentially. Like you get nothing for your money. They didn't change the trigger. They just came out with a performance center trigger. And as I said in the first shots, I do believe that they should have released that gun with that trigger to give somebody a reason to buy the gun. All right, this is an exercise in futility. Maybe they could have changed the sights for the first time in human history. Like they still have the same old sights that came out in like the 1980s. I don't, I, just, I guess I just don't understand what the point of it even was other than to just stamp another number on the side of the gun. So between that and the Glock 380 that came out this year as well, it was just a huge fail bullet for Glock. And I just wanted to mention that it's one of my favorite companies and I was certainly incredibly disappointed by both releases that they had this year. In at number four was another gun that I was very excited about initially, and it is not a bad gun. It just disappointed me personally. And that's gonna be the Beretta 80X Cheetah in 380. It's the brand new Cheetah. I like the old Cheetah a lot. I'm a big fan. And in the 1980s and 90s, it was a very good carry gun. The problem is, is that you made it for, I guess, a more modern crowd, but sort of didn't as well. So the gun comes in at $800, which I feel like is a lot, especially for a 380 pistol. It also comes in at around a thousand if you want an FDE color. I would just paint it with rattle can if I were you. <laughs> And you don't need to pay an extra 250 for the FDE color. You can just paint it with $30 spray paint. It has a four inch barrel and it has a capacity of 10 or 13 rounds. My issue with that is, is it has a weight of 25 ounces, which if you haven't heard is heavier than the Glock 47 at number five. So the Cheetah is heavier at a 13 round 380 than a 17 round 4.5 inch barrel nine millimeter. To make matters worse, if you were to compare that to something like a shield or maybe a P365, it gets kind of embarrassing. And if you go even worse, then you can compare that size to weight ratio versus something like the LCP Max from Ruger, which is half the weight with the same amount of capacity. So I don't like the weight to capacity to caliber ratio for me personally, but if you can get by that, I totally understand. It has a very classic look and feel that people really like, and it's an effective gun regardless. For me personally though, it was very small and the beaver tail was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever shot. Get in your hand. Oh yeah, just beating the crap out of me. That's where my skin was, right there. I have large size hands and for every person I talk to that has large size hands, that gun is impossible to shoot. Not only did it hurt a little bit, it dug with after 100 rounds, it dug a hole in my hand. And you can see on the first shots, I still have blood stained all over the gun from trying to test it to do a thousand rounds. We will have a thousand round review, but I did not shoot most of it. I shot 200 rounds for it and I had enough and I'll never touch it again. So for me personally, it was a big disappointment just because my hands are apparently too big to shoot it. In at number three was a gun that I kind of thought was gonna suck when I got it, but I didn't realize how much it was gonna suck. Well, that's interesting. If that gun is the standard manufacturing double-barreled revolver, otherwise known as the Thunderstruck Volley Fire. And Volley Fire, I feel like is an appropriate name, not because of the two barrels, but because of the hopes and dreams that you might have shooting this gun and trying to hit anything more than three yards away. Oh, that thing bounced. Jesus. So bad. We hit it. Well, I can hit with it, that's for sure. But it won't eject the rounds. The cylinder won't come out. It's hey, kind of hey. classic. I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's kind of classic standard manufacturing. Manufacturing. Like, make a thing that looks cool. Like, it's like the Keltec policy. You make it look cool, and then if it works, eh. The, one of the worst guns I've ever shot in my life. <laughs> it is in the top five worst guns I've ever shot in my life. Part of that is due to the sights. Part of that is due to the double barrel design. Uh, it is a 22 Magnum, which would be great in theory. Uh, it has eight rounds, but it fires two at once, so you technically only get four shots. The biggest problem with this gun, besides the manufacturing quality and the idea in general, <laughs> is gonna be this trigger is, is horrible. It's absolutely terrible. This is the double-fingered hinge trigger with a trigger safety with finger grooves on the grip that if you were to use, you would pinch your hand in them. This gun is like a staple gun fucked a revolver. This is one of the worst designs I've ever seen. So we'll show you here. And it has the trigger safety, which you defeat. And then you take your middle finger, which I'm sure all of you pull the trigger with your middle finger. So I'm sure all of you have tons of experience at this because it's way easy to do with your middle finger. I'm just kidding, it's not. 
then you choke way down on the grip here so you have no recoil control at all and then you pull the double trigger all the way back you see that nice way down there at like 47 pounds and then eventually it fires your a twin barreled 22 magnum with your sights that were literally molded on there and are way off so like i said before if you're looking for a belly gun that you can fire four shots of 22 this is a good way to go for everyone that's not insane maybe avoid this Unit number two was a gun I was super disappointed about. Oh my God, it makes me sad just thinking about it. I can't show you anymore because I was so mad about it. I traded it off already, but it is the POF Tombstone. All right, so I can't guarantee we're gonna hit anything because we haven't zeroed the dot yet. We'll do that up close here in a second, but I'm at the 75 yard mark here, and I just want to get an idea of what the gun's like. So we pop the magazine in, magazine release is right there. We appear to have a cross bolt safety right here. Oh, we got a malfunction already. That is not great. I've shit on that gun a couple times this year already, and I'm sorry for that POF. You make some pretty decent stuff. However, the lever game is not your friend. And I gotta tell you that the first iteration of the Tombstone was horrible. Uh-oh. Also, not great. Kind of. It's a great idea. I absolutely loved it. It's a steampunk looking nine millimeter magazine fed lever gun. Oh my God, that sounds crazy. Could you imagine changing mags on your lever gun and just popping out 60 rounds at once like John Wayne on fucking steroids? What a great time that would be. However, it's not reality. The reality is that the gun had a lot of issues and tons of feeding issues. And the fact that the lever was so stiff, it's ridiculous. It was very hard to get repeat fire out of it. You had to slam the thing forward. And that's just not my experience. If you guys are unfamiliar with PewView on YouTube or Instagram. He's one of the best lever action shooters I've ever met. And we had him play around with it and he struggled as well. POF. Got Chris's favorite gun. Dang. I see why this thing is delightful. I shit you not if you like. It's just nosediving them. Like tips the bullets. Yeah. Hmm. And if you struggled, you'll struggle. I promise you that. I also have a lot of experience in the liver gun. I've been shooting them since I was a kid and I'm no slouch myself. And I thought it was a terrible experience. You have a higher capacity with the nine millimeter, but you have a very slow rate of fire, which kind of eliminates all the pros for a defensive gun, in my opinion. With a standard lever gun, you'll at least have a 357 mag or a 44 mag. So even though you have a shorter capacity, you can get them out really quick and it's a high caliber that's very effective. Whereas a nine millimeter is really only good in bunches. We use nine millimeter in pistols because we're limited to the uh, size and weight that we have. Obviously, if you could fit a 5.56 or a 7.62 in a pistol with the same amount of recoil, we do it, but you just don't. So nine millimeter PCCs are fun for a lot of reasons, but mainly because they are they can shoot quick, they have low recoil, good for smaller statured people. Whereas the POF Tombstone is none of those things. It was almost impossible for my wife to use. Interesting technique you have there. Whatever works. Yeah. I'm an AR girl. It was almost impossible for everyone that I met to use. It looks really cool, and hopefully they come out with a generation two that works well. And if they do, I'll be flipping that thing around right in front of you guys next year. But until then, it'll be on my disappointing guns list. Now before we get to number one, we're gonna drop some honorable mentions and some of the reasons why these guns didn't make the list are just simply because they didn't come out in 2023. However, I reviewed them in 2023, so it's close enough to put them on an honorable mention. I wanted to mention the SIG P210 Carry first off because that was a gun I was ultra excited about. Oh my God, such a sick looking gun. However, I wished it was double stack. I wish it had a rail and I wish it had an optics mounting system, especially for the price that it came out with. And I feel like that kind of gun was doomed to fail to begin with. So it makes me sad, but 
I get it. Another one I wanted to mention was the Arsenal Strike One. What a horrible piece of crap. Try to avoid that if you can. Maybe go with the Archon Type B. It's definitely a updated version of that. And uh, the Arsenal Strike One is really bad. Don't do that. The, the Russian Special Forces have clearly no idea what they're talking about. Also, the Colt King Cobra I reviewed this year and I didn't love just simply because of the recoil impulse. And I felt like it was subpar by comparison to the Python for a similar price. That being said, it wasn't bad enough to be on this video and it definitely wasn't invented in 2023. Now let's get into number one with, I think the obvious choice. And I think if you guys watch my channel, you guys know what number one is. I'll leave you a second to guess and put it in the comment section. It is. Well, that didn't take long, Henry. The Henry Homesteader. <laughs> I like Henry as a company. I fucking love their lever guns. You have no idea. I shoot them all the time. I'm a big lever gun guy. I don't show them a lot on the channel, but I shoot them a lot in my personal life, and I've absolutely loved them. I've always loved them. My dad even hunted out west with a lever action. He used to use a Marlin, and I really, really wanted the Homesteader to work. I saw it at SHOT Show, and people were kind of shitting on it, and I was like, man, that seems like a cool idea. You know, it seems like a more of a old school looking Ruger PC carbine. I wasn't overly happy with the price because you can get the PC carbine, which is very reliable and there's many versions of it for around $500. And the Homesteader is twice that. So I was like, man, for in order to come into this market and be successful, they're gonna have to have quite the gun for twice the price of the PC carbine. Especially when you consider that it's a blowback operated design. It takes clock mags sometimes. It mine was originally the proprietary uh, Henry mags, which are terrible. But you can also get a Glock magazine conversion. They do some similar things to the PC carbine, but it doesn't have an M-lock rail. It has no way to mount a light. It has no way to mount an optic out of the box. And I just felt like for double the price, you should certainly have included all that because Ruger did. But the thing that I thought they should have done the most for double the price was make the damn gun work. And in which case it didn't. And it really makes me sad because I have a decent relationship with Henry. You know, we've done a product release for them once. I've also had good luck with customer service with them. I've had guns that have broke, we've sent them back and they've been fixed immediately. Whereas the home setter was broken it didn't work out of the box. It had a lot of failures, a lot of issues. We re-lubed her up with Slip 2000 here. I put a shitload on it to uh, see if that helped. Strip the mag and dump the magazine out. Okay. I sent it to Henry and it came back and still had issues. For whatever reason, my homesteader was really not worth the money. And I would say it's the biggest disappointment just because I really wanted it to work. I'm a huge fan of Henry. I'm a huge fan of the old style look, the traditional rifles. I want to have a traditional style rifle that functions like an AR or it functions like a Ruger PC carbine, for example, because I'm an old school cowboy guy. It would be a really fun gun to shoot and play around with. It would be a practical gun for home defense and it would be a modern take on the M1 carbine, which is one of my all-time favorite guns to plink around and shoot with and it just didn't happen so hopefully they have a gen 2 or maybe even a gen 3 and someday they'll fix the issues but until then again it will sit atop the throne of shit guns for 2023 let me know your picks put it down below i want to see your list let me know if i got anything wrong if your experience is differed i would love to argue with you in the comment section <laughs> if you like this video please like and subscribe please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle i'll check you later